What's up guys, Dr. Sangeeta here with you for another lecture of Dental Patshala. Thank you all of you who have subscribed to Dental Patshala. Without further ado, let's get started with another lecture on cephalometrics, which is an important chapter. Let's get started. Cephalometric analysis, it is used to access the skeletal pattern and it also determines the degree of difficulty which we are going to have during the treatment and which kind of appliance we need to give to the patient. And it is done on a tracing paper using a sharp pencil and with a good background illumination, the light in the background and we point the marks on the paper and it is definitely easier if it is going to carry it out in a dark room and uh, you can point out whatever it's hard to see you can block the rest of the areas on the film so we are going to study most common points in the cephalometry today the first one is the bolton point it is the highest point on the concavity behind the occipital concavity the second point is this point is the bolton point the second point is the basion point and it is most forward and highest point on the anterior margin of the foramen magnum so basion point is on the anterior margin of the foramen magnum articulator the third point is it is present on the posterior contour of the condyle see this is a condyle and it is present on the posterior contour of the condyle uh, it is a point actually intersecting the posterior cranial base and the posterior contour of the condylar process. The fourth point is the porion point and uh, this is a point in a Frankfurt horizontal plane. So porion point, it is the upper, outer upper margin of the external uh, auditory meatus. So this is the uppermost point on the upper margin of the external auditory meatus. Then the fifth point is the sphenooccipital synchondrosis and it is a junction between the occipital bone. It is a synchondrosis. So it is a junction between the occipital and the sphenoid bone. The sixth point is the cella and it is a midpoint of the cella tersica which holds the pituitary gland. So this is the midpoint of the cella tersica which is cella. The seventh point is the pterygomaxillary fissure which is present. This is a pterygomaxillary fissure and uh, it is as at the base so at the base of the pterygomaxillary fissure where the anterior and the posterior anterior and the posterior wall meet it is present in the base of the fissure so this is a pterygomaxillary fissure the eighth point we have is the orbital orbital will be studying in the frankfurt horizontal plane frankfurt horizontal plane is drawn po i told you in the previous video it is drawn on the uh, porion to orbital so it is the line joining from porion to orbital orbital is the this is the orbit and orbital is present in the inferior margin this is the inferior margin of the orbit so it is the lowest point the lowermost point on the inferior margin of the orbit this is orbital and the ninth point is ans which is the anterior nasal spine and it is present at the tip of the anterior this is the anterior nasal spine and it, this point is present at the tip of the anterior nasal spine so next tenth point is point a which is subspinal so this is the innermost point because it's saying sub subspinal is the innermost point on the contour of the premaxilla and it is present between the ans and the incisor tooth so it is a innermost point which is present between the ant ans and the incisor tooth now coming to the next point which is point b it is present between point b is present between the incisor tooth and the bony chin so this is the also innermost point this is supramental and the next point twelfth point is pogonion Pogonion is the most anterior point on the chin. This is the chin and this is the anterior most point soft tissue. This is the bony. So this is the anterior most point on the chin. You need to remember this, the pogonion. Don't get confused in pogonion and menton. So menton is the inferior point on the symphysis, mandibular symphysis. And this is the innermost point on the chin. See, this is the anterior most. This is the innermost. So the anterior most part is po, pogonion. And the innermost part is me, me, the inner self. The inner us is from me inside. So this is the 
me is the mentone point which is the innermost point on the symphysis and go go gonion so gonion go go is for it is present on the angle of the mandible this is the angle of the mandible so this is the point which is lowermost point present on the angle of the mandible so coming to the planes the first plane we have is the mandibular plane mandibular plane is the is in the mandible of course and mandibular plane it is a line which connects gonion to mentone so mandibular plane is this one this are mandibular plane it is a line which joins the gonion and the mentone and there is an angle which is formed between the mandibular plane and the cella this is the cella nasion so a cella nasion line is drawn and the cella nasion line there is an uh, angle when these line intersect an angle is formed this angle is known as the mandibular plane angle now imagine this is the this line intersecting the cella nasion and the gonion and mentone this is the mandibular plane let me write it so this is the mandibular plane so uh, this where these two lines intersect is the mandibular plane angle so if this angle is steep there is an anterior open bite because this this angle is big so there is an anterior open bite if this angle is flat so there is a deep bite and a short anterior facial vertical dimension if this angle is steep then there is a long anterior vertical dimension and it's going to be anterior open bite now we have three angles sna snb and anb coming to sna this is the cella this is the nasion and this is the a point so let's draw cella to nasion and this is the point a so this is sna let us write this one is s n and b so s n a s n b so the s n a angle ideally should be 84 degrees in caucasian people so if the s n a angle is greater than 84 degrees so if it is going to be greater than 84 degrees that means there is maxillary prognathism if s n b angle if this angle is supposed to be 78 degrees if this angle is less than 78 degrees that means there is mandibular retrognathism now the a n b angle this is supposed to be 2 to 4 degrees for class 1 molloclusion i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any question about cephalometry leave it in the comment below and give it a thumbs up if you like the video make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet and i'll see you next time